John here with Tomorrow's Tech. Just got back from a little uh, vacation, if you want to call it. I uh, got to go do a graduation over in Virginia, down at uh, Liberty University. And I got to hang out at the Outer Banks for a little while. It was a great time, but uh, now we're back, and now I've got to get back and do some videos. Uh, a couple things I promised you guys. I promised you PIWIS3 content. So today we're going to go ahead and dip back into some more of that. I figured most of this was going to be trial and error on my behalf. I am no means an expert on this matter. Uh, any of you guys that are, any of you guys that uh, have more experience, I highly encourage you to drop your comments down below. Uh, make sure to uh, you know give us your feedback and help the community out, uh, guys. So with that said, uh, before going out to the car and dipping off into some PIWIS fun, I just wanted to introduce you guys to my new Facebook group. This is a Porsche Technical Support Group. Uh, make sure you guys go search and join. This is set up just to do exactly that. I mean, if, if you guys have knowledge, get out here and share it. I mean, there's no reason to hold on to any of this stuff. Let's help our fellow Porsche enthusiasts out and uh, let's move forward together. So. With that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and flip this camera around. We're going to go out and pop in the Porsche Panamera. I'm going to teach you guys a couple new tricks and try to keep this content coming on a regular basis. Alright guys, so real quick, uh, before we go hop in the cab and start hooking up the PIWIS3, I just wanted to show you real quick here. This is my power supply unit that I've built. If you guys have a power supply unit or the proper power supply unit, great. If not, and you're new to the PIWIS, uh, make sure you get you one of these. You can watch this video right here, and this will teach you how I made this one right here. You can do it for under 100 bucks, or typically the models that you're going to need probably cost you $600 up to $2,000 depending on which one you get. So make sure you at least get a 60 amp. It needs to be adjustable. You, you really want something that's going to be 13.5 to 14.5 volts. Uh, we have this one set up at right now I think about 14.1 so it's adjustable. <clears throat> you can check all that out in the other video but we're going to go ahead and get it hooked up. You see it pop on as soon as you touch it to the battery. Then we'll go ahead and plug it in. <clears throat> now, as it starts to build up, uh, it, right now it's at 12.6, and you'll see it'll just slowly start raising. Uh, the reason I built mine this way, and I and I put my voltage adjuster here. You're always sitting in the car when you're doing your PIWIS testing and, and calibrating and troubleshooting so it only made sense to me to put it there so that I can look through the window and I can see where my voltage is when I'm doing this. So, Alright guys. Alright guys. I had a little bit of a technical error. I came out and started shooting this video and I don't know if I lost any of the video footage so I'm gonna start again. I had to take the other memory card out. So very first thing I want to do is show you guys my power supply unit if I can get it to focus here. There we go. There's my power supply unit and that is why I had the voltage indicator on the outside so I can sit in here and look at it from inside the cab. Right now it's at 14.3 which is perfect for programming with the PIWIS. Alright, so now I'm going to move you back down here. Alright, 
so here's the home page of my PIWIS 3. Alright, so in this particular video, I'm just going to go in and teach you guys the basics on how to come in, how to use this properly to be able to come in, find your fault codes, and I'm going to give you a general idea of how you can go in and start to troubleshoot some of your issues. Alright, so before we do that, I'm just going to teach you guys a couple things that I didn't have anyone teach me how to figure out the hard way. And this will help get you guys on the right track from the get-go instead of making a few mistakes. Alright, so one thing that I had a little bit of an issue with <clears throat> right here in the middle in between the battery and the VCI, that's your little controller that you plug into your OBD port, it has a little exclamation point there. Uh, if you click on it, it says error PPN status. Okay, so I did figure out what that means. <clears throat> this software, if you were at a Porsche dealer, it connects to their online servers. Okay, so connecting to their online servers allows a lot of different things. If, if you can see here, uh, this keeps flashing a couple little different things. Uh, one of them, you know, says valves are ready to be sent, you know, and all that good stuff. Well, if you're connected to the online Porsche network, that's where you would typically do all of this. Now, another very, very, very important thing that I had to learn the hard way, uh, when you come in here to Diagnostics, so we're going to go back home, now you see you have all these other applications, and I will go into some more of these later in the future. I've, I've learned what pretty much all of them do. Uh, one real big one, and a lot of Porsche mechanics, once they found out that this information was out there for the public to get their hands on, one thing they kept saying was the wiring diagrams, and they were they were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe that, that you know people can get their hands on these now." So that is a great one. We'll go more into that later, but that's not why we're here. All right, so we're going to go into diagnostics. All right, fault finding is an excellent excellent tool, but you don't have to go into it from this screen. All right, diagnostics. This is the English version. This is the online English version. So typically you would want to be online, but we have the Chinese PIWIS version, so that's not possible. We cannot go online on this version. And one example of one thing that you would not be able to do with this version, you won't be able to get keys made for your vehicle. I don't know what anyone said in the past, but with this offline version, you just can't do it. You actually have to be connected online to Porsche's network in order to cut keys. Even though that option shows available in here, you just can't do it. All right, and a couple other things, uh, very, very important. Anytime you're gonna do any programming, you do not want to be in this version here. You wanna be in the developer German version to the right. That one says Diagnostics 38.250, okay? Now, the downfall to this, it's in German. So you can go about any way you want to. I would suggest using Google Lens or a app that you can download on your phone so that you can hold your phone over it and look at it and it will actually read that and transcribe it back to you in English in real time and that will save you a lot of headache and I would try to do that as soon as possible and stay out of this mode as much as you possibly can you can really make some mistakes over here like I did one mistake I made I tried to run a calibration on my transmission a I didn't have a power supply hooked up to it that I do now B you just do not do it in online version it, it will definitely not work and then when it does not work it's going to ruin your transmission to the point you can't drive it so it doesn't ruin your transmission altogether it's still salvageable but you can only fix it in German mode alright so getting out of all of that we're gonna go into the English diagnostics so that I can teach you guys the basics because you can do most of your basic stuff in here all right, so as long as you're in your vehicle, your ignition's on, you can see we've recognized our 970. That's our Porsche Panamera. This usually takes quite a while. 
Uh, the English version definitely does take a, a lot longer than the German version. It's actually pretty snappy. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. So, once you get to this screen here, this is all of your control units. When I say control units, I'm going to show you this is a hard version of our transmission control unit. Um, I ordered one of these for this car because I specifically have transmission issues that I'm working through right now. And I thought that uh, I might be able to clear some of them with a transmission control unit because I thought that some of my issues were based off of... I thought I bricked it, essentially. Uh, that's something you have to worry about with all of this, okay? So, right here, each one of these equals one of these hidden in your car somewhere. Alright? So, this is going to be the main brain. This is what you're talking to. So, in this instance, this being my transmission control unit, that's going to equal the, the transmission electronics PDK. So, the one that I just highlighted there is everything in here. So, for example... We're going to go ahead and just click into that. Now, when you go into the English version, once you do this, up here at the top, it's going to say create a VAL. What is a VAL? That is a vehicle analysis log. Now, the best way to explain that, it's going to be a pre-log of all of the control modules on your vehicle. So, as you can see here, there's, there's about 27 or 28 different modules on this specific, specific vehicle that it's going to go through and record all the data uh, currently on those modules and give it to you in one nice big fancy printout. I don't want to get into this too much, but I will tell you if you're brand new to this and this is the first time you've used it, I would suggest going into the English version and go ahead and do this. Go ahead and run a pre-log on your vehicle. It'll automatically save it. We'll do another video in the future, and I'll show you guys how to go in and read some of it. I'll teach you how to go put it on USB drive, pull it out, and go put it on your computer so you can make better sense of it. But for now, we're just going to skip all of this, and we're going to hit F11 down here for no. Now, when you go in developer, developer mode in German, um, it doesn't even ask you for that. And it's so much faster logging in. This takes a while. Alright guys, there you have it. We have made it into only our DME, or I'm sorry, our PDK control module, which is this exact one here. So inside of this module, you're going to notice that we have three different codes. This blue one down here, if any of you guys are experienced with the PIWIS 3. This may even be on the 2. I don't know. Uh, but any of you guys with any experience know what this blue icon is right here? There's no column indicator for this. So I don't actually know what that is. Um, and I don't know... I, I would really like to know what that is, and I'm sure you guys would too. I don't really know what that is, and it kind of irritates me a little bit, but... It's all good. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go in and just kind of show you uh, the basics now. So really, this is everything transmission on this particular control module. We've got three issues here. Now, one thing that I can tell you guys, some of these issues could be created by something else unrelated that could pop into this. So. As you can see here, check PSM control unit fault memory, okay? So the PSM, that, that's our uh, air level suspension system. So other things can actually pop up and in, in, into some of these control modules and it's just gonna be taking a chess piece off of the board at a time in order to figure a lot of this stuff out, all right? But to make some of this easier, I'm just going to go ahead and show you real quick. Uh, this was just one particular item. Uh, it's going to make it a little easier for me to show you how to drill down. But today, uh, I want to go back. So we're going to hit Overview. And I want to teach you how to come in and check everything all at once. Instead of going in and trying to drill down in each one and maybe getting lost or, you know, what, what have you. 
So once you come in and you're on your main control selection, instead of just clicking on one, you can see here we have all of them. Just go ahead over here to F12 in the bottom right corner. Let's click that. And what it's going to do, it's going to go through and check every single one of our control modules. It's going to start pulling all the DTCs, which are our faults. And it's going to bring them all up on a list for us. And we'll give it a minute and I'll show you more about that. Alright guys, so the computer has went through. It's detected all of our modules. Not all versions have been detected. Okay, so at this point... What we're going to do is uh, we're going to come down to F8, and what that's going to do, if you look over here on the very left column, you see DTC, and you see the little icons popped up. Those are all of your control modules that have a fault code on them. All right, And if you notice, by hitting F8, it's selected only those that have fault codes. Okay. So, what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to go ahead and go up to our top bar here, and we're going to click Fault Memory. Alright, so now you're in the screen that is showing you every single fault code on your vehicle. And so as you can see, I've got quite a lot to work with, so we're going to have plenty of teachings here. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to go through. All right, so when you're in here and you're looking at this, you'll notice mine's fluctuating a little bit because some of the codes may be coming in or out. I, I don't understand that part yet, but all right, so for instance, I'm just going to go down to something easy, all right? So if you notice here, PCM. PCM is going to be your main navigation system in your car, your, your radio navigation control unit system. Alright, so you see here that I've got one of those blue marks on there, and I still don't know what that means. But, it's going to say that uh, there was a fault received from my Park Assist control unit. Okay. So if you look down here, there's our park assist. All right, so you see that the front left inner park assist sensor has a function restriction, all right? So ever since I bought this car, uh, I've had it for about a year and a half now, I've actually turned off the, the function inside of my navigation system because it wasn't working. It kept telling me that there was an error um, you know, whatever. So I haven't got into it yet, but now that I have this and we're going to do some teachings, I decided to go ahead and order. I ordered a kit off of eBay for about 34 bucks. So what we're going to do is once those come in, I'm going to go ahead and replace them and I'll show you guys how to remove these. Uh, another thing that I found in my car when it was new uh, it was missing one of the puddle lamps on the driver's side door. So that was another error that I had on here. I actually cleared it the other day and I didn't record it and I should have. Uh, so yeah, uh, so we're going to deselect all of these. Alright, so let me just show you guys. So when you come in here, and it doesn't matter what your alarm is, let's just say you go ahead and click on it. The best way to start to figure out how you can start troubleshooting, and I showed you this earlier, uh, on the main page, instead of going back out to the main page, come down here to F9 and click on Fault Finding. Alright, so now that brings you up a page with some information that will help you dig further into this particular issue. So, for instance, we've got our Park Assist Ultrasound Sensor. Alright, so it's going to give you a warning up here that you can follow, risk of injuries and damage to the vehicle, make sure that no person, animal, or obstructions are within uh, movement range. Uh, you know, so there you go. It just gives you, it gives you a bunch of information. Diagnostic conditions, fault setting conditions. So, you know, it tells you you need a supply line, ground strap, park assist, ultrasound sensor could be faulty. 
Uh, in my instance, it's only one out of, uh, I think this car has six sensors. Uh, I ordered a four pack. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace the ones it's calling for the front left inner. So I'm going to replace that here, here soon. And hopefully when I do that, we'll be able to come back here and delete two of these off of our list. So, and, all right, so I'll just give you an example. If you guys go in and, and you've uh, went ahead and replaced, let's just say that, that uh, front left inner park sensor. So at this point, what you would do for that, sorry, this thing is just acting a little weird. Let's see, this one and this one. We will go to coding and programming, number seven. And what you would do is an automatic coding to reinitialize that particular control unit that's controlling those. Okay, well, I thought I was only going to do those, but it's actually doing all of the control modules that I had selected from the beginning that had fault codes on them. And that's okay. That's that's fine. It's just reinitializing re those modules. This is the same thing that you would do, and the same thing we are going to do once we replace those. Okay, so you see it was successful. Every single one of these control units just got automatic coded. So we're going to click next. We're going to go back to fault memory. And at this point you can see some of them uh, turned a different color here on active, which means that they are no longer active. Okay? So we're just going to go ahead and hit delete, and now we're going to try to delete all of these, these codes. And, on, you know, it'll come back and tell you it couldn't delete the codes and blah blah blah. Alright, so that was just a general way to get you guys in here and kind of get, get your feet wet with this a little bit. That's how you come in and pick all of your control modules and just start going through them. And, you know, you guys may or may not have any alarms uh, or be like me and have all kinds of alarms. Alright, so in a future video... I'm going to teach you guys how to drill down on some of these. Once these park assist sensors come in, that'll be a good one. Uh, I'll show you guys how to replace those. They're actually fairly easy. You just got to take the bumper off, which uh, you can check that out in another video I have. But this gives you a general idea of how to come in, how to look at these, how to use your fault finder to give you information on how to start doing your troubleshooting and just go from there. Alright guys, that's all I've got for you on this video to keep it short. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my video. We've reached the end for today. I hope that you guys are a lot more confident in your PIWIS or if you're looking to purchase one, this gives you a general idea of how to go in and get started. And it's going to help eliminate some of the issues that I ran into starting out. Uh, again, there's not very much information on this tool. People don't really like to share the information, so we're going to nip all that in the bud with these videos. I'm going to teach you guys, I'm going to teach you the way that I found to do it. May or may not be the right way. If you guys are out there and you know this tool like the back of your hand, don't be afraid to share some of that knowledge. Make sure you put some comments down below. If you guys see a mistake that I made, let me and my subscribers know it. You know, I mean, uh, trust me, criticism is not taken uh, to heart here. So if you got it, give it to me. Uh, it, it'll just make me stronger and it'll make all of you stronger in the process. Again, guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. If you haven't had a chance, head over to my new Facebook group. It's Porsche, Porsche Technical Support Group. I just created it today. It looks like we've already got 16. Uh, we may even have more. Yeah, 
I had 16 earlier, we got 24 members now, so guys, go ahead and go over there and join. I'm going to make sure that I post all these videos on there. If you guys have any videos that you would like to put on there, I uh, will support your videos on the channel as well. Any wealth is knowledge. Knowledge is power, guys. Let's keep this thing going. See you on the next one. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And while you're at it, check out some of my social media pages below and the new videos I got coming out next.